Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to make Arya Stark's dagger, the cat's paw dagger. Originally it was, uh, I think it was Tyrion Lannister's dagger, but again, it became her dagger. Uh, again, don't worry guys, no spoilers. We're going to make this dagger out of my favorite material, foam. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Before making my dagger, I went and did some research. I got an image of it. Got an image of it and uh, blew it up on a Xerox and got it to the scale that I like. And this is going to be our template. And I have got some a one inch EVA foam. Now, if you don't have one inch, you can definitely take uh, two half inch pieces, glue them together, or two millimeter, 10 millimeter foam as well. You can get those two sticking together. But I got this at uh, TNT Cosplay Supply. They sell this in one inch. So we're going to trace the handle. Now, normally some people like to trace the entire blade, as you can see right here. But um, I'm going to really work on trying to keep this blade super thin using thinner foam. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just focus mostly on the handle. The handle is very ornate and round. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do the handle separately. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we're going to just go and round this off a little bit. Now it's all traced. We're going to take this under the bandsaw and cut this out. I'll be right back. There is the base of the dagger. Now you can see I did not put the grooves into it yet. I'm going to round everything off first with the rotary tool, shape it up, and then we'll go back and put the grooves in because this is, I think it's supposed to be a dragon bone. I got it shaped up. I have my pattern. Now the next step is I want to make some marks on where the, um, the ribbing is going to go. All right, now that we have these marks we're going to connect them now that I have these lines these are the high points these are the parts i know i do not want to grind off so i'm going to take a rotary tool with my sanding drum here i'm going to carve into here a little bit to grind the grooves into the handle uh, once i go through with that first uh, get the majority of the shape with this then i'm going to go back in with some various stone bits and I'm going to, and that's going to not only uh, be a little more sculptural, I'll be able to clean these edges up a little bit more. Uh, in the original design, it's it's like um, this is a photograph of a prop. I mean, the real metal one's kind of hollow, and it's got these little like little opening spots on it. And I'm going to try to, uh, and I'm realizing what I could do is um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this onto a the, the bandsaw be very careful but I'm gonna cut it with the bandsaw and I'll be able to do both I'm gonna keep it flat and when I cut it I'll make the scallops for both sides at the same time because it's still relatively flat so let's do that I'll be right back okay that looks much much better I'm really a little bit more happier with this uh, I know that there's some detail that goes down the side I'm definitely gonna do this with uh, two millimeter foam but we definitely have to make a pattern of that um, Let's do this. All right. So I'm going to put on some tape. Let's put some paper tape on here. Let's make it really thin here. Now with a template, we're going to go ahead and cut out. There we go. There's my, <laughs> there's my template. Um, on the design, the actual design, the uh, even this is a side profile. This does come up and around, so I'm definitely going to focus on that because I think in the original design, like that. So now, this part actually looks like it goes comes back underneath. Outside metal pattern that goes on top of the dragon bone here. So let's go ahead and take this off. We'll cut. Uh, this is really flimsy, and I have a hard time translating this onto uh, two millimeter foam. So I'm going to do a little spray glue on the back of this, and stick it down on poster board. So, all right, here we go. So now I have completely glued to the poster board. Let me go back in with the uh, a fine tip pen. We have our thin two millimeter template. I would like to kind of combine this into one. I'm going to try to do both sides. And have it join somewhere maybe the uh let's see what we can do here look orange what a great wonderful color for something this thin uh take your blocks and you just do one set at a time you just lay it down like this okay, let's get a little closer to the edge 
don't want to waste any foam on the edge like this like this and then you shift the weight to the other side and do the other side you flip it and make this two guys join right here now Dr. Blade let's cut this out before we glue this on uh, let's move on to the blade so what I did was I have a six millimeter foam here so my plan is to I'm going to uh, push the wire into the foam to make an impression I'm going to take the I'm going to take it out you can still see it I'll, I'll take the wood burner and kind of follow where the impression is to recess this a little bit so it will sink deeper into the six millimeter foam and I'll be able to skin it and hide it with this and then once it's glued on I'll be able to dremel and bevel the edges all together this is to hide this but I like I think it'd be cool to keep the blade um, thin on this dagger so once it gets sealed this will stiffen up a little bit but uh, let's do it about right there it looks good okay all right see now I can see what the impression is what I did burn it now Apply a thin layer of contact adhesive. Alright, it's dry enough. Here's the blade. And of course, in the original design, there's a bevel for the sharpness of it. So we're going to go ahead and cut that out. your mask on uh, I went ahead and traced the uh, where the uh, jewel is going to go on the dagger so I'd use that as my lineup point to kind of glue it and there's gonna be a lot of finessing I guarantee once I start gluing this down now before I glue this on I know for a fact some it's gonna have to do a lot of I just kind of made things a little bit large so I'm probably have to cut it and trim it as I glue it down which is a technique in its own right so And now for this edges, we're just going to kind of like rock it down and pull it. Now this might go beyond where I want to go. That's where I'll just come back and trim it. Got that. Let's cut this. You guys can see now the overlap. Pretty extensive, so I'm just going to take the X-Acto blade. All right. Line this up, stick it in there. Yep. Hold on, guys, this looks good. I'm gonna do some dremeling. This has to be re-tapered a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, it's not bad. When you make yours, wrap, don't cut the uh, the claws into it yet keep everything um, smooth and do it last because I'm realizing all the stuff I did is not really lined up and doesn't look that great. Uh, if I was to do this again, I would not have done the uh, the claws. I would, I would have left everything smooth, cut the notch for the blade, and then cut them in accordingly where I need to put them. I want to put this blade in so I realize that I'm going to have to cut right down the middle here. A little bit on both sides. Uh, I'm going to use a sharp blade for this. All right, now. Right down the middle. Of course, there's the wire, which is fine. We're going to push that right straight in there. Look at that. So now I need to cut it back just a little bit more. This is a bit too long, so let's cut this just a bit. Um, all the drilling and grinding is little fuzzies in here, so I'm gonna take a, uh, some heat to it. A torch would do this, but my torch, my fear would damage it really quickly, so I'm just gonna use something simple as a lighter and a flame, just kind of do a little quick passes with it. 
Let me guys make sure everything's lined up here correctly before I glue this in here. Yeah, let me, let me get some, um, let's grind some foam in here real quick. Okay, let's see, let's try it again. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, it's better. That's much better. Kind of adhesive, like this. There you go. And now take a piece of scrap foam and smear it around inside. All right. Make sure everything is nicely lined up, like so. Now, the, this trick only works when you apply it when it's wet. The key with this technique is that when you're putting something that's inside the foam, recessed, if you let it dry, you'll never get it in there. But if you do it while it's wet, everything slides in place. And what you do is you wait till the vapor content evaporates. And then once it evaporates, you can push everything together. So um, now to speed things up, I'm get the hair dryer. There's a groove on the top of the blade. Uh, and that's a, like, I think they call it a blood trench or something like that, where you stab and like, so there's no suction. You're able to pull things out. I think that's actually the story behind those. Um, but let's plot this. Let's plot where that's going to go, so I can make a template. So I make sure I get this the right on both sides. Okay. Get that. I'm really happy with the blade. It's coming together. It looks better than I thought it would. Uh, there's some big gap bosses right here I'm not crazy about. And back in the days, I would just cut a piece of foam and wedge it in there. But I have foam clay. Whoa, foam clay. And I'll have links for this below the video. Because if you guys have not played with this stuff yet, it is a game changer. So I'm just going to take... Um, also, it's good to kind of wet it. Get some water in here. And the actual uh, dagger has like a, a jewel in that. Uh, I don't need to go out and get resin or plastic clear stuff to make that a jewel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little dome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this. I'm going to do is wet both sides. And the, I've always found with water, it makes things stick. Get that, st get that dome action going. Now back in the days, I used to just take a rotary tool, take a piece of foam and just drum it and smooth it out. But with foam clay, it's... You can do this, and this is awesome. A little bit of water. You can smooth it. All right, look at that. Ooh, so cool. It's coming together. Now, um, I can't really do much <laughs> until it dries. So what we're going to do is we're going to head. So let's go find a place for this to dry. Now that the, uh, the foam clay is all nice and dry, our next step is to go ahead and seal this blade with... Rapid Fill. It's a new product, and I'm really digging this stuff. Especially for something like a metal blade. This will work it all in. Make sure I get it nice and good on both sides here. Fill in the back of this guy as well, too. Foam clay's dry. Let me dribble this down a little bit and put some uh, Rapid Fill on that as well. Now we can patch it with this on the top here. All right, now it's all nice and dry. This is where the magic happens. You can sand this smooth. I'm definitely going to seal it again with Creature Cast, but this is get the base of it. Get it nice and smooth, so when you go to put something on top of it, it goes really smooth. Everything's nice and sanded. The blade looks great. Uh, the top and bottom I patched up, they look good too. A little spike in the end. This all looks wonderful. Now for our next step, we're going to go ahead and seal this up with a creature cast. Here it is. It's all done. The sheen, the gloss you're seeing on here right there is the Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. Um, this actually serves as a purpose because I was actually going to put a clear coat on this anyway to get the Aluma Luster to... This paint is amazing. How it works is that you always start with a glossy black base and you airbrush the uh, Aluma Luster on it and it makes the chrome blade. Uh, we're going to do that first. I'm going to go ahead and paint the chrome because the blade actually comes back in here and so I'm going to have to paint around it, But uh, which I have right here. This is my Pache. 
I just realized something. Before we start painting, there's some additional detail on the dagger that needs to be put on there. There's little nails, and I have some pins that we're going to use, but they're a bit long. So I have um, a pair of dikes. I'm going to cut the nails a little bit shorter. Now, you can actually get short pins, but I do not have any. So right now, I'm going to cut these guys down a little bit. Just okay. A little dab of glue. Looking good. My next step is um, now the blade is painted. I want to go ahead and black these guys out on the inside. Be very careful. Uh, I realize I want to paint these chrome as well. All right, I did the uh, chrome finish on both sides. Of course, the um, my foam clay is supposed to be my jewel. And to create the, uh, without actually using a piece of cast resin, I'm going to fake this by doing the uh, chrome underneath it. And I take um, clear red. That looks great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hair dryer. These look great, they're both dry. I'm going to proceed to paint the gold leaf all right, this side is dry. I just, it's one of those rules that um, when you're working so fast to get something done, you paint one side and you're trying to be careful, so you get impatient and you flip over and start painting the other side even though the other side is wet. And you're doing that, trust me, no matter how great you think you are, you're gonna get it and you're gonna touch it, it's gonna get gold here and gold here, and next thing you know, you're like, ah! So it's always just a good idea to make sure your, your other side is completely dry before you start working on the other. The dagger looks great. I'm going to go back in with little uh, the pins I put in and touch this up with some flat black. There he is. This is Arya Stark's uh, cat's paw, she called it. We like to better known as the uh, amazing dagger that Tyrion Lannister had, but no more. It's Arya's dagger. This looks amazing. Again, this looks awesome. Some people I know would probably like to age this. I like it because... Even in the show, it looked really brand new and bright. So this actually came out better than I expected. I really do. I was really kind of on the fence about it. But once it was sealed and painted, I am really happy with this. Uh, and there it is. Uh, the jewel technique actually turned, looks a lot better than I thought it would. This actually turned out really cool. Again, everybody, uh, I have these patterns available on my website for free, plus the link below the video. And again, the irony is my friend Bill over at Punished Props made a video on the same dagger, but he used a different technique. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, go ahead. I have a link for it below. Check it out. I think he used uh, some wood and magic sculpt. And I know there's files out there for 3D printing, but if you can, the pattern's free. Download it. Make your own foam Aria dagger. And while you're at it, guys... Go to my store, EvilTedSmith.com. I have numerous patterns. And while you're at it, get on my mailing list. And while you're at it, click on my Amazon link and do some shopping. Every little bit of shopping, buying my patterns, helps me keep making videos. This was a blast, guys. Again, if you guys have not seen it, a lot of people like to binge this show. I just recently started watching this with my wife, and I finally just watched the final season. So, again, I want to see a lot of Aria cosplayers out there, and you have the prop to do it with, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you back next time right here on the Old Head Live.